Spring 2024 is one of the most stacked anime seasons in a while. I mean, I've got 11 animes here. 11 animes to recommend. And I am not even gonna mention the season twos and season threes that are coming up this season. 11 animes, and I've divided them into two. You have three episode rulers, where you gotta watch three episodes and see if you like it. Then you decide whether to continue to watch it or not. Or a must watch anime, where you gotta watch it or not you'll be left out by the anime community. Starting off the list, Kaiju number eight. Kaiju number eight takes place in a world full of kaijus. Obviously, kaijus are not good for your health, so there is the defense corpse that defeats them. After the kaijus get defeated, you got Kafka, our main character, cleaning it all up. Their carcasses, the meat, the shit. But deep down inside, Kafka wants to join the defense corps. And somehow, some way, Kafka becomes Mr. Kaiju number eight. I read through the manga of Kaiju number eight. It's a very cookie cutter show in an anime. It's not really that interesting. What is worth your while is the animation. This is uh, being made by Production IG. And Production IG, when they want to put their shit together, put their shit together. Kaiju number eight looks phenomenal. Kaiju number eight is gonna be one of those animes that are just gonna pop up in anime conversations here and there in the future. Grandpa and grandma turn young again. It's a very simple anime, right? You got this old couple who raised an apple tree and then somehow, some way, grows a golden apple. They eat the golden apple and then become young again. The show is a gag anime where it's just, you know, it goes from gag to gag to gag to gag. The gags are mildly funny. What I find fun about the show, it's just wholesome. You got to see an old couple rekindling their youth, rekindling their love to with each other. It, honestly, I just find this a wholesome, fun time. And also it takes place in Aomori and you know, shout out to Apple. Spice and Wolf re-adaptation. So I'm with the party that says that the Spice and Wolf re-adaptation doesn't look that Good. I honestly prefer the older style of Spice and Wolf. But that being said, it's not that big of a deal. The spice is still there. Holo is still as amazing as advertised. If you haven't watched Spice and Wolf, this is a perfect way to get into the series. And if you have, it's a good way to just, you know, get that nostalgia kicking. Sentai Daishikaku. It takes place in a world where you got a bunch of Power Rangers that just defeated the Monster Army. These Power Rangers, you know, they're savvy businessmen. They decided to spare the underlings to just defeat them over and over and over again for a profit. Now, the underlings, especially Fighter D, decided that, hey, you know what? This sucks. This is not a good living. They're not even paying for healthcare. And decided to fight back. Can't help to cheer for the underdog here. And you got some really, really good animation going on. Being adapted by Yostar Pictures, I'm not really familiar with their work, but from what I've seen in the two episodes of Go Go Loser Ranger, they look really, really good, and this anime looks like it's gonna be really, really fun. Bartender Kami no Glass is gonna make me an alcoholic. This anime follows Sasakura Ryu, who is a bartender who's really, really good at his job, who knows what to give his customers the type of drinks they want. I'm sure, later in the series, you get to see some really, really interesting cocktails with really, really interesting stories behind them. Bartender Kamino Glass is actually a re-adaptation of Bartender from like the early 2000s. And I saw like the first episode of that anime and I'm gonna tell you right now, Kamino Glass, a better adaptation of the source material in my opinion. Shimatsu Train Doko Eiku. So this is a very strange anime, right? Got Yoka, right? Who walks into a tile and out of sheer luck, she's the 777777th um, customer of the JR line or whatever. She got gifted 7G, which is essentially just like 5G, but like way better. But it turns out it actually just destroys the world. It turns everyone into an animal. Yoka's friends decided that one day is like, hey, you know what? Where the fuck is Yoka? Let's just go to Ikabukuro, the last place we saw her, and just try to find her. So you got these four friends taking on a train all the way to Ikabukuro. If you look at Google Maps, it takes like about an hour to do, right? In this show, it's gonna take about 12 episodes through like these mysterious and overly complicated and just strange world. I think that strangeness and just weirdness and in a sense sort of creepiness is very fun. And the comedy, I think, also slaps. So there's gonna be a battle, in my opinion, right? Which is gonna be the best idol animes this season. The first fighter 
is Jellyfish Cats Swim in the Night. This is the popular one. It follows this girl, Mahiru, who draws, but decided that, you know, she got bullied for it for some fucking reason. And then she decides she doesn't want to draw anymore. But then she meets Kano. Says that, hey, I love your drawings, man. I want your drawings to be in the background of my music. Then they started group band. Very simple idol anime stuff. This is adapted by Dogakobo. And for some reason, Dogakobo, once in a while, just decided to be the best anime studios of all time and just make an amazing looking anime. And dude, Jellyfish is spectacular. It's just that the plot isn't really there most of the time, which Girls Band Cry, the second fighter of this idol battle that I have in my head, does have. Girls Band Cry follows Nina who runs away from her family all the way to Yokohama and wants to start a life by herself. Nina walks around, finds her idol, Momoka, just playing her guitar in like some random subway station. Momoka wants to quit because she's not really finding success in the music industry, which Nina says, hey, don't do that, I love your music. Momoka's like, yeah, sure, why not, fuck it, I'll keep on going. But you start a band with me, and then they start a band. Girls Band Cry is a more adult take to like this band idol genre thing. There's middle fingers, there's people over drinking happening. That being said, I have to bring up the fact that it's CGI, I mean, obviously you can tell here. It's really, really good CGI. At moments, I think it does look better than some shows this season, but whether it's gonna be better than Jellyfish, I think at moments it might well, but most of the time, Jellyfish is probably gonna be visually more spectacular. Who knows who will win in this idol anime battle fiasco? I guess tune in to find out. Fable is about this guy called, well, Fable, who is a really, really good assassin, who's actually too good at his job. And his boss says that, hey, dude, you've killed so many people this year. Take a vacation for a year so you can lay low, get the heat off of you. And yeah, take your assistant with you. So they go to Osaka and then you just try to lay low. This anime is hilarious, dude. It's very dry humor. It's not normal anime humor where it's just uh, funny faces, but it's not like absurdist humor where like the guy's like, you know, farting in some dude's face or anything. It's just very dry, funny humor that I just honestly enjoy. Sometimes you even miss the jokes. That's why I love Fable. It's a very specific comedy that I honestly freaking love. I just wish that this show was adapted a little bit better. It's being adapted by Tezuka Productions right now. The show takes place in Osaka and I freaking love that city, but I wish they would show more of that city, man. Last but not least, Tonari no Yokai. Tonari no Yokai takes place in a village where yokais coexist in the world. So the story has three main arcs, right? You got the main arc of Mutsumi and Jiro. Mutsumi lost her father in like this weird disappearance and Jiro is essentially like taking place of her father and just trying to take care of Mutsumi, trying to keep her safe from the bad spirits that are around. You got a B story in Buchiyo, who is a new yokai that just exists in this world and trying to find a placing in this village. And you got a third side of this Kappa, who really, really likes this boy and is just trying to figure out how to ask her out. This show can shift in a dime between the sense of eeriness, the sense of wholesomeness, the sense of romance anime, can just shift between those three in like mere seconds and it is phenomenal. It is an anime that I'm totally invested in because of the unique world that it is, the unique scenarios that it has, and the unique themes that just conjure up together into a really, really fascinating anime. I think Tanari no Yokai-san is a must-watch that not a lot of people are watching for some reason. 